Those tree sweets look delicious. I can't wait for them to fall from the trees. You won't have to wait another moment, Tria. Not while I'm around. For you, Tria. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Topsy. Ugh, grown ups. <laughs> you see, Sarah? Three horns can do anything they set their mind to and be the best at it, too. All I see is the day in front of us. All I see is the day in front of us. Burning bright with a newborn sun. Come follow me. Hills to climb and valleys to roam. Oh, streams to follow all the way home. To the land before time. Of course I do, Sarah. Now, Topsy. <laughs> well, I'm glad someone believes me. I wish it were true. It is true, Sarah. You're a three horn, so be proud. We're the best among the crowd. And you know that we can do. What we set our minds to do anything. Listen while I sing. You can do anything if you just watch me. You will agree. Trees are no match for my leg. Watch this rock crack like an egg. My horn slice, and yes, there's more. I can really roar, do anything. Come and join me, sing. We can do anything. Three horns are the best. Put us to the test, we'll do anything. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Sarah? I do now. Three horns really can do anything. Look, everybody, I have a new trick. I call it log running. If you watch carefully, you can do it too. First, you get on the log. This is the hard part. <laughs> then, you stand up. This is the harder part. Do not fall off. The harder part.
part is next. Now, you start running on top of the log. The faster, the better. Now I am going faster and faster. Go, go, go! Whoa, that looks like fun. Log running is fun. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and it is very easy to learn. I can show you how to do it. I can. Hey, I'll give it a try, Ducky. So what if I get a little wet? Move over. I'm going to try, too. Come on, Petrie. Petrie, not sure. Little for try? Oh, no. Not me, Petrie. Mm -hmm. Four-footers like us can't get our feet that close together when we run. But it sure is fun to watch. Okay, here goes nothing. <laughs> that was fun, while it lasted. It doesn't look that hard. <laughs> See? It's easy. <laughs> <laughs> Petrie, your turn! Petrie, not sure about this. Me not good runner like Chomper, me flyer. Well then, if you start to fall, you can always fly off the log, Petrie. Oh yeah, me can fly. Uh, okay, me try. You! <laughs> Guess it's not so easy after all. We just need to practice until practice isn't practice anymore. Yeah, we could get as good as Ducky, or even better. Chomper, you are not better than me at log running. Oh, no, no, no. Hey, why don't you practice? Then when we're all ready, we can have a game to see who can log run the longest. This is going to be a fun game. Especially when I win! Don't count your hatchlings before they hatch, Chomper. Me agree, because me going to win. Oh, no, no, no! I will win! Once I can get back on my log. Hi, guys! What game is this? The great log running game. Chomper, Ruby, Petrie, and Dicky are going to see who can stay on their log the longest. Look at them go! That's a game for two footers, not four footers like us. Whoa! whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> whoa. Oh. This log running doesn't look so hard to me. Huh? Mm -hmm. Three horns can do anything better than any one, two-footer or four. That's a fact. Just watch. <gasps> Step aside, two-footers. Let me show you how a real champion does it. Thanks for helping, Spike. See you back at the watering place. 
Okay, tell me. Why are you limping? I slipped off a log. No big deal. Oh, yes, it is. Your ankle is all swollen up. Here, these will ease the pain. Trisha, you bring some nice soothing mud and put it on the hurt. <laughs> don't bother with the mud. I've got to get back to practice log running. I don't think so. You'll be okay, but you need to stay off that ankle for a while, Sarah. Sarah? <laughs> I didn't ask for a mud bath. <laughs> this is really fun! <laughs> sure is! Me want to have fun, too. Somebody hurry up and fall! Hmm. We need another log, Petrie. Come on, Spike. What do you think, Spike? Can you knock one down? <laughs> wow! You make it look so easy! <sighs> okay, let's go. Petrie. Thanks, guys. You and Spike should give it a try, Little Foot. It's really fun. Oh, no, not us. You saw what happened to Sarah. <laughs> well, feels pretty good. Thanks for helping. Are you sure your ankle is okay? I'm sure. Time to go win that log running game. It'll be so easy. If it's so easy, how did you hurt your ankle? Accidents happen, but I can handle it. I'm a three horn. That's what I'm afraid of. What are you afraid of? Oh, nothing, Topsy. It's just Sarah twisted her ankle at the watering place, but she says it's okay now. Of course it's okay. <laughs> Takes more than a bad ankle to keep a good tree horn down. Dad's right, Tria. I'm feeling fine. Ready to go back and tackle my log again. I want to win that game. Log? Game? What's all this? My friends are playing a log running game, Dad, and I'm gonna win. Well, just what exactly is log running? Well, you get on the log in the water, and then you start running, and the log spins as you run. It's easy. Why would you want to do something silly like that? To prove that three horns can do anything they set their mind to and be the best at it, remember? Just like you said, Dad. Well, uh, uh, of course three horns can do anything they set their mind to. Uh, uh, they, they just don't set their mind to things like log running. But, Dad, you didn't say anything about that. You said three horns could do anything. Yes, just not that. You can forget about playing that game, Sarah. Some things just aren't meant to be.
there's only one thing to do. I gotta prove to everyone that I can win that log running game. Okay, everybody, let's start the great log running game. On your mark, get set. <laughs> Ducky, Ruby, and Chomper have gotten really good. This game might take a while. <laughs> Hold it! Stop the game! Whoa! Whoa! Oh. I am the only one still going. <gasps> Do I win? Yes, Ducky, you... Not so fast. You guys started without me, but the game doesn't count unless I'm playing, too. But, Sarah, what about your ankle? You should My ankle is fine. Where's my log? Uh... Never mind, I'll get my own. Ducky not win? Well, sort of, but not really. I do not care. It is just a game. Just a game. I'll show them. Three horns can do anything they said. They're mine, too. So why can't I get on top of this dumb log? Whoa! Watch out, Sarah! You're getting too close to the fast water! I can handle it! I'm a three horn! Uh oh. We have to stop her, or she'll end up going over Roaring Falls! Ruby, Chomper, Ducky, use your logs to try to catch up with Sarah! Right! Let's get moving and go! Be careful! We don't want to have to save you, too! Fast water log runners to the rescue! Littlefoot, need help, too! Okay, Petrie, you keep an eye on Sarah from the sky. Tria, have you seen Sarah? No, dear. Hmm. Well, I'm going to go look for her. If she's gone to the watering place to play that silly game after I told her not to, why, I'll... I know, I know. You're going to be very upset. Remember, Topsy, you were young once, too. I was? Huh. And that's where I'm going. That rock could block the fast water and, and stop Sarah from going over the falls. But Mr. Threehorn, it's so big. No one can move it. A three-horn can, if he sets his mind to it. Now watch me. Let us help! 
Okay, boys. All together now. Harry! She almost hit! Sorry I disobeyed you, Dad. You better be. But I'm so glad that you're all right. We did not finish our game, Sarah. Do you still want to play? No, thank you. <laughs> I think Sarah's learned her lesson. Lesson? Huh. I don't have anything to prove. After all, I stayed on my log all the way down the fast water. <laughs> I meant to do that. <laughs> And that's why tree stars change color before the cold times. Wow, that was a great one, Grandpa. Yes, tell us another story so we can listen to it. Yes! Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, now, let's see. Oh, I know. Once many cold times ago, there was a young longneck named Star Watcher. Every night, he climbed to the top of a hill to look at the sky stars. But one night, the sky stars decided to come down out of the sky. They wanted to take a look at the long neck who was always looking at them. The sky stars said hello to Star Watcher and asked if he would like to visit them up in the sky. Are you sure that's how it happened? Huh? I'm not so sure you're telling that story right. All I see is the day in front of us. All I see is the day in front of us. Burning bright with a newborn sun. Come follow me. Hills to climb and valleys to roam. Oh, streams to follow all the way home. To the land before time. Before time. I think you must be forgetting the stories in your old age. Sorrow, is that you? It's me, all right. I thought I'd never find you. I can't believe it. After all this time, I'd given up hope. I never gave up. Like green food in cold times, it, it may, may shrink, shrink away, but, but it, it will, will always grow back. back. <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa? Who is this? Children, I want you to meet an old friend of mine. His name is Sorrow. It's a pleasure to meet you all. But who's this? A sharp tooth? <laughs> oh, that's Chomper. He was hatched by Littlefoot. And now he's living with us. Yeah. 
I want to learn how different dinosaurs can all get along. Well, you couldn't have found a better teacher. It was good to hear you tell one of the long neck stories again. Grandpa's great at telling stories. Oh, I know. Your grandpa was a great story speaker. Story speaker? What's that? A story speaker would travel the land, telling the great long neck stories to all the long neck herds. And you were a story speaker, Grandpa? Your grandpa was one of the finest story speakers ever. I tried to learn every story I could from him. Oh, well, I, I just wanted everyone to remember our important past. <laughs> Me like stories. <laughs> <laughs> I do too, I do, I do. <laughs> yeah, Grandpa, Sorrow, could you tell us one of the great long neck stories? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think we might be able to remember a story or two. Now, who knows how long necks got their name? Oh, it is because they have long necks. Yep, yep, yep. Everyone knows that. But did you know that long necks didn't always have long necks? They didn't? Many cold times ago, before you or I had hatched, Long necks had short necks. Back then, the trees were very short, so they could eat tree stars from the top of the trees. The trees would sing to the bright circle every day as it crossed the sky. The bright circle liked their song so much that it reached down and pulled the trees until they were very tall. That way, they would be closer to the sky when they sang their bright circle songs. But now, the tree stars were so high that the short-necked long necks couldn't reach them. That night, the night circle felt sorry for them and reached down to comfort them. The light made them feel better. And so, they lifted their heads up to get closer to the night circle. In doing so, their necks stretched enough to reach the tree stars. The kindness of the night circle helped us become long necks. And that is how long necks got their long necks. That was a very good story. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Looks like talking about tree stars made Spike hungry. <laughs> 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 get to tell stories all the time. It is an honor to tell the great long neck stories. And a very important job. But some of the long necks have begun to forget their stories. That's why you have to come back and be a story speaker again. I, what? Oh, I don't think I can. We'll travel the land, telling everyone the great long neck stories, just like we used to. It, it sounds like a nice idea. So, you're going to be the story speaker again, Grandpa? Of course he is! Sorrow, I'm sorry. I know how important the stories are. And I loved being a story speaker, but that was long ago. Things are different now. What do you mean, Grandpa? My place is here in the Great Valley, with you and Grandma and all the others. But. You're the story speaker. The long necks need you. I need you. I can't tell the stories on my own. Sorrow, I am very sorry. 
But even though my days of wandering have passed... Then you've turned your back on the Long Necks and all of our traditions. Sorrow, wait! I have nothing left to say to you. For sorrow. He's hurt and angry, and I don't want him to feel that way. I had hoped he and I would be able to tell the great stories together. Uh, but those days are long gone. Remembering, remembering is a kind of a funny thing. It makes me think of time gone by. Friends are made by saying hi. Thoughts I'll always hold dear. Remembering makes reappear. But even when the thoughts are sad, I'll always have remembering. Sorrow would someday become a story speaker. He knows the stories as well as I ever did. Why didn't you tell him? Well, I never had the chance. And now Sorrow's too angry to listen to me. Well, it's sad, really. I've already begun to forget some of the Long Neck stories. I can't let the Long Neck stories be lost. I've got to find Sorrow. Sorrow's footprints lead out into the mysterious beyond. Who? Who is it? <gasps> Come on out. I I'm not scared of you. Why would you be scared of me? Oh, Chomper. I, I was just... What are you doing? I'm following you. What are you doing? I'm following Sorrow's footprints. I have to bring him back. Grandpa wants him to be the new story speaker. Wow! Then you're going to need my sniffer so you can find him fast. I got him! Then let's go. To the fast water. Wow, it looks big. Maybe to us, but Sorrow's a full grown long neck. He could just walk across. Maybe we can walk across too. See, it's not that deep. Whoa! <laughs> I think it might just be a little too deep for me to walk across. Hmm. It might not be too deep for me. See? Can I get a ride? Sure, hop on. Thanks. Now just keep going straight. Like Sorrow probably just stepped right over this ledge. But it's too high for me. Almost! Almost! Not quite. But maybe 
a whole pile of rocks will help us climb over. <laughs> Too bad Sarah's not here. She's really good at pushing things around. <laughs> there. That should do it. Let's give it a try. <laughs> Little foot. We make a pretty good team, Chomper. Yeah, we do. <laughs> now let's go try to catch up with Sorrow. <laughs> His smell is getting stronger. Chomper, what are you doing following me? We came to ask you to come back to the Great Valley. You need to talk to my grandpa. I don't have anything more to say to him. Why are you so mad at Littlefoot's grandpa? If he doesn't come with me to be the story speaker, all the great stories will be forgotten. Well, why can't you be the story speaker? Well, because he's the story speaker. I can't do it by myself. I can't. Look! Sliding rocks! Oh no. Followed me. Those rocks are now blocking the way back to the Great Valley. Oh no, we're trapped. What are we gonna do? We will be okay. Maybe we can climb over. There's no way. We might be stuck here forever. Chomper, just take a deep breath and calm down. I don't think I can. It's dark and it's stuffy. Close your eyes. Think of a sky filled with puffies until we can find a way out of here. But what if you can't dig out of these rocks? What will we do to survive? Did your grandpa ever tell you the story of Tall Stepper? Tall Stepper? I don't think so. Tall Stepper grew up to be a great long-necked leader. But when he was young, just about your age, he learned a great lesson about being brave. Tall Stepper and his little sister were playing one day and having a great time. They were having so much fun that the wind became very jealous. The wind swirled and blew around Tall Stepper's sister, 
and carried her into the air and up into its wind cave in a tall, tall mountain. Tall Stepper was scared to follow the wind up into its wind cave, but he knew that if he was going to save his sister, that is what he would have to do. When Tall Stepper reached the cave, the wind made a deal with him. If he could beat the wind in a race down the mountain, his sister would be released. Tall Stepper knew it would be dangerous, but he knew he had to do it to save his sister. No one had ever beaten the wind before. But Tall Stepper found the courage he needed to race faster than any long neck before him. Because Tall Stepper found courage when he was afraid, he was able to beat the wind down the mountain. The wind kept his promise and brought Tall Stepper's sister back from the cave. Tall Stepper grew into a great leader. And whenever he needed to be brave, he remembered how he once had the courage to beat the wind. And sometimes, when I need courage, I think of Tall Stepper too. Wow. Thanks for telling us that story, Sorrow. Yeah. I feel better now. Littlefoot! Littlefoot! Grandpa? Littlefoot! Yeah! I hear him too! Grandpa? Grandpa? Littlefoot! Me find you! Petrie! What are you doing here? Me find them! Everyone! Over here! you guys find us? We followed your footprints to follow you up into the canyon. Then we heard at the rock slide. We heard you yelling, too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorrow, there's something I want to talk to you about. About what I said earlier? I'm sorry about that. No, no, Sorrow. I think you should be the new story speaker. Me? But I, I can't tell the great stories without you. But Sara, you told us a story. The one about Tall Stepper. We were really scared, but your story helped us feel a lot better. You see, Sara, you saw a chance for one of the great stories to teach something important at a time of need. That's what a good storyteller does. That's what a story speaker does. So, you really think I'm ready to be a story speaker? I know you are. Me too. That's right. Mm -hmm. I just wish I had told you earlier. I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I thought story speakers always had something to say. Maybe you're right. In fact, this reminds me of the story about the very first story speaker. Her name was First Voice. One day, First Voice came upon a great cave. But when she walked into the cave, she began to hear the footsteps of another so excited. Do you see where he went? Can someone please tell me where we're going? No! Oh no! No! Hang on, Petrie! We're coming! <laughs> Oh, 
All I see is the day in front of us. All I see is the day in front of us. Burning bright with a newborn sun. Come fall on me. Hills to climb and valleys to roam. Oh, streams to follow. Circle celebration. You know, no? Uh, uh, she no, no! Uh, uh, I don't know either. I'll tell you everything you need to know. Go back to your sleeping spots before Petrie tries to make you work all day. <laughs> Must work. Bright Circle need wonderful celebration so it stay all shiny more longer. Petrie, you can waste your time with the celebration, but I'm going back to my nice warm spot. No, oh, Sarah Wright, me need help. Big celebration need big space all clean. Um, is there more to the celebration than clearing the clearing? Oh, yeah. We gather delicious cold time foods for everyone and have big feast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is much work, but it is worth it. Yes, yes, yes. Also, everyone think about what they learned since last cold time. Like me, learned this. I know what I've learned. Look! I can hop like a hopper! <laughs> we all have great biggie fun later, but we make place ready first. I think I'm going to like this bright circle celebration. <laughs> ready, push! <laughs> Sleeping spot is getting colder and colder. This makes Bright Circle all happy. Uh, how so? Bright Circle sea celebration. If good, then Bright Circle stay in sky longer and longer until warm times come. The Bright Circle is watching us? Yes, Bright Circle always watching. No, it isn't. So, if the Bright Circle doesn't like the celebration, does that mean the warm times won't come? That's what Petrie thinks, but it isn't true. It's just a story. Right, little foot? Huh? Well, I don't know. I just think it's fun to celebrate something that you're thankful for. Fun for some of you, maybe. To me, it just seems like a lot of work for no reason. Are we done with this tree yet? <laughs> Me no done. <laughs> Push tree to fast water for bright circle. <laughs> okay, let's do it. it. Yep, yep, yep. to see you kids are getting an early start. There's a lot of work to do today. Maybe for some of us. Oh, beautiful.
wonderful day for a celebration, isn't it? Oh, yes, yeah, sure it is. is. Hmm. Something wrong, Sarah? Why would a grown-up like you care about the bright circle? Well, there's nothing wrong with being thankful, Sarah. Me so thankful. <laughs> yeah, and I'm thankful I'm done pushing that silly tree. Hmm. I have to learn what I've learned since last cold time. <gasps> I know what I've learned it. Yes, yes, yes. I guess whatever Ducky learned is underwater. She's going awfully deep. Maybe she's trying to get underwater green food for the celebration. There's green food underwater? Yeah, but you have to hold your breath a long time to get it. Bubbles! <gasps> I practiced it very much since the last Bright Circle celebration. I did, I did. That was really impressive, Ducky. Well, I bet I've learned more than all of you. I learned, um... What you learned, Sarah? Tell us. Tell Bright Circle, too. Oh, forget it. Forget what, Sarah? Forget everything. I'm so sick of hearing about the Bright Circle. Why? Do you not like the Bright Circle? I like it fine. I just don't think we need a whole celebration to thank you for being there. <laughs> What's next? Am I supposed to start thanking the trees and rocks for being here, too? <gasps> well, if you want to. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I don't want to. The Bright Circle is just a ball in the sky that's going to come and go and make warm times just like always. It doesn't need a celebration. I think everyone can make up their own minds about the Bright Circle and the celebration. Then go ahead and waste your day if you want to. But I'm not helping and I'm not celebrating. Doesn't look like you think it's so good to me. <sighs> Where are Tria and Trisha? Oh, they're off on some bright circle celebration nonsense. Really? You think it's nonsense? Because that's what I think too. Of course you do. You're a three horn, like me. Life's exactly what you see. Nothing is a mystery. A rock's a rock, a tree's a tree. It's what I call reality. Reality is so plain to see. It's right in front of me. My reality is problem I can see the world is flat. The sky is round, can't argue that. While we stand still here on the ground. The bright circle goes round. Reality. My reality. Is no mystery. Is just what you see. It's right in front of me. There's no mystery. My reality. It's plain to see reality. I think Spike knows what he can do. Yep, yep, yep. That good, Spike. What you do? <laughs> What is doing down there? Ah! Everyone! 
everyone will love those tree parts at the celebration. Yup, yup, yup. <laughs> Whoa, easy there, Spike! Me think Bright Circle very proud. All right, time for us all to get back to work. But, Littlefoot, have you not learned it anything? Haven't I learned anything? Of course I have. Watch this. <laughs> hey, you sound like Spike. And I'm almost as strong as him. Uh, I said almost. Here, we'll have a feast of our own while everyone else is busy with that bright circle nonsense. Hi, Topsy. Hi, Sarah. Oh, are those for the celebration? Nope, they're just for us. What do you mean? You know I think this whole celebration stuff is ridiculous. Well, the rest of the Great Valley disagrees with you. Huh. Sarah doesn't. Right, Sarah? Right, Daddy. Well, Trisha and I have been having a great time. We've helped make the clearing look pretty. And Trisha found her first sweet tree part. Huh? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> are you listening to me? Hmm? What? Oh, 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 of course I was listening. You and all the others are busy thanking something that doesn't need any thanks. Well, if you change your mind, Trisha and I will be digging up sweet roots for the celebration. No thanks. I'm staying here with Dad. Hello. <laughs> Dad, do you think Tria and Trisha are silly? No, of course not. Hmm. Oh, you worry too much. There are some things that I just know. Now, eat. to like the taste of bad tasting tree parts. Mm. <laughs> Ugh. No, I haven't learned that. No worry, Ruby. Bright circle very patient. Uh Dad? Oh, yes, Sarah. Remember when Tria took me and my friends to the mud pool? Yes. And at first I didn't want to get in, but once I did, it was kind of fun. Hmm? Well, now my friends are getting ready for the celebration, and... Well, maybe it wouldn't be so bad if we helped just a little bit. Well, I suppose we could go over there just to see how everyone's been getting along without us. <laughs> Thanks, Daddy! is looking much cleaner. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, it's just about ready for the big celebration. Hey, is that part of the celebration too? Uh, me not think so. Sarah! Circle is angry. It just means that until we get help, we're just going to have to fight this fire by ourselves. 
ourselves. Spike, dig like you did earlier today. Chomper, use your legs to kick the dirt into the fire. Okay! <laughs> Tree stars work? That'll work. Oh, I sure am glad I'm faster at running than I used to run. Say, running must be what I've gotten better at. Tree stars out of the water. I will. Yes, I will. And Petrie, I need you to take these wet tree stars, fly over the fire, and drop them onto the flames. Fly over fire? You can do it. It's for the bright circle. Right. For bright circle. The fire's not out yet. Mr. Threehorn? You're here too? Of course I'm here. And I'm here to help too. Drop some tree stars over here. I can cover this whole area.
All right. You know, maybe I've learned it's okay to celebrate. Hmm. <laughs> Once in a while. You're right, Sarah. It isn't that bad, is it? I know you're not one for celebrations, Topsy, but I'm awfully glad you're here. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> oh, me happy everyone here. <laughs> 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 